It's January 2nd, 2022. Happy New Year and welcome to online worship at the Rockaway Cathedral. We are so glad that you have chosen to be with us this morning. Whether you're just having a look or seeking a place to worship, we are delighted to have you here. And though we may not be able to meet together physically, that is not going to stop us from rallying together spiritually. Join us online for a time of worship and a message from Pastor Marlon Curtin. Join us in experiencing the joy of singing to the Lord with the gospel duo, Melody and Harmony. In New York, cases have increased recently and are extremely high. The totals being reported are the highest of the pandemic. The numbers of hospitalized COVID patients and deaths in New York City area have also risen. According to public health experts, getting vaccinated is an important way to protect yourself and others from getting COVID. Because of extremely high COVID-19 transmission in New York City right now, unvaccinated people are at an extremely high risk. 
Let's continue to do our part to beat this virus by washing our hands, social distancing, and getting vaccinated. God bless you, and remember to stay safe. Continue to check out our website for more updates. Let's pray. Now, before I pray, I just want to give what I believe is a word from the Lord, the bite of Christ in, in America. 2022 will be a year of revival. Revival has come. 2022 will be a year of revival. Revival has come. Uh, the Lord has shown me salvation, deliverance, healing in 2022. Salvation, deliverance, and healing in 2022 for this country and other countries around the world. The year of salvation, deliverance, and healing. That's 2022. So Lord, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your revelation. I pray, Lord, that you could use us as instruments of salvation, instruments of deliverance, and instruments of healing for all those that need it, those in the body of Christ, who need deliverance, who need healing, and those outside of the body of Christ who need salvation, healing, and deliverance. Lord, give us the authority, give us the anointing, give us the opportunity to speak into the lives of people, to be instruments of your salvation, to be instruments of your deliverance, to be instruments of your healing to those in our lives, those that those family members that we speak with, friends that we that we hang out with, people that we work with at our jobs and in our businesses, let us be the touch point. Let us be the, the connector. Let us be the conduit of your salvation and your deliverance and your healing in 2022. We speak it, we declare it, and we receive it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Salvation, deliverance, and healing. Revivals come. Revival is coming 2022 in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's scripture of the day is taken from Psalms chapter 3, verses 1 through 4 in the Christian Standard Bible Version. Lord, how my foes increase. There are many who attack me. Many say about me, there is no help for him in God. Selah. But you, Lord, are a shield around me. My glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cry aloud to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain. Selah. The Rockaway Cathedral is a nonprofit organization that is seeking to win souls for the Lord in the far Rockaway community. We especially want to make a difference in the lives of those who have been disenfranchised by poverty, poor health outcomes, poor education, and high incarceration rate. However, we need your support to get there. Your act of kindness can be a lifesaver for someone. Remember, richness is not necessary, but willingness is. Please visit our website, www.therockawaycathedral.com. Click on the blue Donate tab on the bottom of the page and then click Make a Donation. We are also asking you to continue to support us by viewing our service once a week we thank you for both your partnership and continued support. We're now on Cash App. You can send your donations to Cash Tag Rockaway Cathedral. We thank you for your partnership and continued support. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Rockaway Cathedral. My name is Pastor Marlon. Happy New Year. Happy 2022. Happy 2022. Thank God. Thank God you made it. Thank God we made it. We're looking forward to the to 2022. So so we're going to start out with a new series. It's called Spiritual Warfare. It's called Spiritual Warfare. So so earlier in the year, somebody told me to look at a movie called John Wick, John Wick 3. Um, I had never seen the first two. Uh, John Wick 3 stars Keanu Reeves. So I, I watched it. But one of the subtitles is, is called Parabellum, John Wick 3 Parabellum. So Parabellum, what is that? Parabellum 
it's a Latin phrase mean prepare for war. So, so you know, so I looked up who who was the where did this come from? So it says that if you have to, if you prepare, if those that want peace should prepare for war. So I looked it up. So it turns out it came came from this book called uh, De Re Militari. De Re Militari by Flavius Vegetius Renatus. It's actually written uh, in the Roman Empire by a Roman for a Roman emperor. He's basically talking about uh, how to reorganize the Roman armies who kind of fall into, into disrepair. So, so the phrase comes from this book. Uh, it turns out this author is a Christian, which you know adds another layer to it. He's a Christian, and he was giving instructions on how this emperor should reorganize the Roman army so they could reach and retain its former glory. So, so but there's uh, but there's some spiritual uh, truths to that. You know, we, we talked about the issue of peace. You know, we, we talked about peace in, in uh, Adam and Eve part one, desire Eve should have, Eve will, you know, Eve, we want, we talked about Eve having a quiet belly, being able to be satisfied with a certain amount of, so, so peace has a reference in satisfaction. Peace also has a reference in the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. So we talked about that in the kingdom of God series. You know, that's that's one of the promises of God. And also, uh, right after the summer event, we had a three-part series on peace, walking in peace, peaceful mind, peaceful heart. Um, that these are some of the fruits of the Spirit. These are some of the things that we can have as Christians. So, so we've talked a lot about peace, peace, quiet belly, righteousness, peace, and joy, peace of mind, walking in peace. So, so all everybody wants peace. Everybody wants to have a peaceful life, inner peace, inner peace. That's what we want. But the thing about inner peace is you have to you have to fight for it. If if you're here and peace is on the other side of that river, you're gonna have to struggle. You're gonna have to put in some effort. You're gonna have to do some things in your life in order to bring peace in your life. So so that's what this uh, this series is about. It's about it's about what we need to do, what we need to do, how we should acquire peace. Because the only way to acquire peace is to be ready to fight in the spirit realm. We're not talking about fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat or weapons or anything like that. We have to fight in the spiritual realm in order for us to get peace in this realm. So, so this series is called Spiritual Warfare. This message, today's message is called Home of the Brave. We're going to have a nine-part series on spiritual warfare, but not right away. It's going to be spread out over January, February, March, and a part of April. We're going to spread out nine messages on spiritual warfare. The first message is called Home of the Brave. So today's message is called Home of the Brave. The series is called Spiritual Warfare. The theme is, he, there, therefore, he who desires peace should prepare for war. But in modern terms, it's, if you want peace... Prepare for war. Spiritual warfare. Be blessed. Join us as we welcome the gospel duo Melody and Harmony.
Today's message is called Home of the Brave. Today's message is called Home of the Brave. It's part of our spiritual warfare series. The scripture can be found in 1 Samuel 17, verses 31 and 37. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 31 and 37. I'm going to be reading from the Christian Standard Bible. Please stand for the reading of God's word. Uh, today's message is called Home of the Brave. It's part of our spiritual warfare series. The scripture is 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 31 to 37. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. What David said was overheard and reported to Saul, so he had David brought to him. Saul said to David, don't let anyone be discouraged by him. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. But Saul replied, you can't go fight this Philistine. You're just a youth, and he's been a warrior since he was young. David answered Saul, your servant has been tending his father's sheep, Whenever a lion or a bear came and carried off a lamb from the flock and went after it, struck it down and rescued the lamb from its mouth. If it reared up against me, I would grab it by its fur, strike it down and kill it. The servant has killed lions and bears. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, for he has defied the armies of the living God. Then David said, the Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine, of this Philistine. Saul said to David, go, and may the Lord be with you. So far the scripture. Lord, speak through your servant today and bless your people. 
Jesus' name, amen. Um, this, uh, this series is really going to be about this, these three people. It's going to be about David, Saul, and, and Goliath. It's going to be about David, Saul, and Goliath. It's going to have, you know, going to have three messages on David, one message on uh, Goliath, five messages on Saul. Again, it's going to be spread out over about three months or so. So the, the, the problem that most people have, and I would, I would argue that most preachers have when they talk about David and Goliath, they, they talk about it as if we're David, that, you know, that the, you know, it's done from the point of view of David and, and you, know, you know, go kill your giant, go kill your Goliath, things like that. Truth is, you, you know, we're, we're not David. We're not David. The truth is, most of us in the body of Christ are Saul. Saul is Saul is king of Israel. He's chosen by God. But he doesn't have a lot of confidence. He's, he's, he deals with issues of fear. He, he deals with, with anger and, and jealousy and rage and, and impatience. So yeah, he's he's called by God like, like we are. He's he's a He's called out by God. So he's like a Christian. He's a believer. God loves him. God's called him. God gives him something. But he's got these issues. He's got these issues that, that, that prevent him from growing, that prevent him from laying hold of the promises of God. Yes, he lived a long life. Yes, he was king of Israel. Yes, he was king for 40 years. Yes, he had sons and daughters. But his legacy was cut off. His legacy was cut off because, because of the things that he did that kind of got in the way of what the Lord had for him. We're not, we're not, we're not David. We're not David. Because David, you know, there are some people that are like David. David is going to kill Goliath. When Goliath wakes up in the morning, he doesn't realize that's his last day on the earth. Because David always kills Goliath. Saul does not. And what Goliath represents, Goliath is not a toothache. A Goliath, Goliath is not, um, you know, you having a problem with drinking, you having a problem with uh, you know, committing crimes, you having a problem with, with, with whatever it is you're trying to, you know, you're, you don't have a job. Goliath doesn't represent a personal problem for an individual Christian. Goliath represents a threat, a threat to the body of Christ, a threat to your church, a threat to your community, a threat to your family. Goliath doesn't represent a personal thing that you have to get over. It's not something you gotta pray about. It's not something that you're dealing with that you're struggling with. Goliath represents a clear and present danger to your family, your company, your church, your community. And Saul never slays Goliath. David always slays Goliath. How do we get peace? How do we have inner peace? Saul has to start slaying Goliath. It, it, again, it's not Saul has a drinking problem. It's not like you, if you have a drinking problem, that's not what this message is about. If you got a problem with pornography, that's not what this message is about. If you have a bad marriage, that's not what this mess. That's not Goliath. Goliath is not your bad marriage. Goliath is not you getting laid off. Goliath is not you being a victim of a crime. Goliath is not you committing crimes. That's your personal issue. That's something you have to deal with personally. That's a different message for a different day. Goliath represents a threat to your family, a threat to your community, a threat to your church. And, so, and the Lord has placed you in a position to do something about it. But most of us don't. That's why, that's why this message, this series of message is for you. It's about Saul. It's not about David. We'll talk about David. We'll talk about Goliath. But this message is for Saul because Saul is where like 99% of the body of Christ is. This message is called spiritual warfare. It's about preparing Saul to kill giants. And when Saul kills giants, 
not only will he have inner peace, but his family, his church, his community, his company will also avoid a massive threat because what Goliath represents is not a personal thing you're dealing with. Goliath is a national or regional or significant threat, not to you personally, but to wherever you are in, in your community, in your church. So, so this message, this series of message, messages is about getting Saul, getting Saul in a position where Saul can kill giants. Let's read the scripture again. 1 Samuel 17, verses 31 to 37. David was said was over, what David said was overheard and reported to Saul, so he had, had David brought to him. David said to Saul, Don't let anyone be discouraged by him. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. But Saul replied, You can't go fight this Philistine. You're just a youth, and he's been a warrior since he was young. David answered Saul, Your servant has been tending his father's sheep. Whenever a lion or bear came and carried off a lamb from the flock. He went after it, struck it down, and rescued the lamb from its mouth. If it reared up against me, I would grab it by its fur, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed lions and bears. This uncircumcised Philistine would be like one of them, for he's defied the armies of the living God. Then David said, The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. I have three points today. The first point is called he didn't run. Point one is he didn't run. David David was, was anointed to be king in front of his brothers. In front of his, he's the youngest son. Unexpectedly, he's the one that the Lord used, Lord chose through Samuel the prophet to be the future king, to be the replacement for Saul whenever his term was up. But David, you know, was a very young man. You know, he was still basically living at home. So through a series of events, he ended up having two jobs, right? He was tending to fleet the flock at home, but he was also a musician for Saul because Saul had been having trouble sleeping. He had been being tormented by nightmares and things like that. So the search went out for somebody to be a musician to play. When the person played, Saul would feel better. The spirit would leave him. The evil spirit would leave him and he would feel better. And it turns out of all the people, of all the people chosen for this particular job, somehow through a series of events, David, that same one, that little young kid, little young punk who became next in line to the throne, was brought in to be the musician for Saul. So when Saul had problems, David would break out his harp and he would start playing. So, so if you look at the scripture, right before this happened, David has two jobs. He was still tending the flock at home and still in the service of Saul. And this this is uh this message is for David. So 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 David was called and and, and this is the message for for the body of Christ. Wherever you are, you know, you God has called you. And and he may have called you to some great task, some monumental thing, some CEO, some founder, whatever it is, some governor, mayor, whatever it is, head of a nonprofit. But you're not there yet. You're not there yet. You're, you're not in that position. You're too young. You don't have the experience yet. You don't have the appointment yet. You don't have whatever it takes to get from where you are to where you are, for where you need to be. And and that's okay because because David, you just have to wait your turn. Wait your turn. So so David was able to serve his own dad, who didn't obviously didn't think much of him because he wasn't even in the room when the prophet first came. And he was a servant of Saul, who didn't really know who he was. Because if you remember, after he kills Goliath, and they're just and he's coming back to, to the camp, Saul says to his commander, Well, who's who's that guy's father? You know, because, you know, we got to, you need to exempt his father from taxes. So, 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 so David's been playing for Saul for maybe a couple of months. He didn't even know who he was. So, so this, in spite of the fact that David didn't get the respect of his father at home and didn't even get the real notice of the king, he still served the king 
and he still served his father. Because, because even though David, even though you're David and you're called, some of you may be David and you're called to do this, you have to learn how to serve before you can lead. You have to learn how to serve. So David served his father, even though his father didn't respect him. Served the king, even though the king didn't even know who he was. Uh, because that because that's the true hallmark of a leader. It's service. Even though you're called, you must serve before you lead. So I don't know what that message was for, but so you see David coming up to serve his his brothers. His father said, "Hey, take these items. Take it to your brothers. Your brothers are out with." Saul's army. Three of his brothers were serving in Saul's army. So he goes, he meets his brothers with the food. As soon as he shows up, Goliath had been threatening the armies. He had come out on a regular basis and said, look, your army's there, our army's here. We don't need to fight. Let's settle it this way. I'll fight one of your men, send one of your best men. Whoever wins, if I win, we'll be, you know, you guys will be our slaves. If you, if somebody defeats me, we'll be your slaves. We don't need to have a fight. So every morning, Goliath would, would walk out. He's like nine foot tall. He's got all of these armaments. He's even, he, he doesn't even have his own shield. He's got a guy carrying his shield for him. He's got, a, he's got this, he's got that. He's a huge man who's obviously an enormously talented fighter. And nobody wants to, to fight him. And the thing that happens every morning, Every morning, Israel, the, the, the armies of Israel come out, they do the war cry, they do battle stance, all this other stuff. Goliath comes to them, they all run away. They're fearful, they're afraid, they're petrified. Even Saul himself is terrified. And they all back up, they all run away. But David didn't run. David started asking questions, you know, who, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? that he would defy the armies of the Lord. This message is called home of the brave. The, it, the, so, 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 so the message ultimately for us in the body of Christ is how do we become giant slaves? How do we become like David? One of the characteristics of David is that David is a brave person. David is a brave man. He's a very young man, but he's brave. He doesn't run from conflict. He doesn't run from situations. He doesn't run from the things that make most people run away, the things that make most people question their faith, question their, their position in life. David doesn't do that. He doesn't have any position. He's, yeah, he's anointed by God, but he's got nothing else going on. He's serving people. It doesn't matter. David's not afraid. He sees that this is a national threat and he, David doesn't run. David doesn't run. The king is running. The soldiers are running. They're armed, experienced men running. David doesn't run. Point two, he had history with God. So then this scripture is the conversation the conversation that Saul and David are having about David going after and fighting Goliath. Now, David is like a teenager. He's probably 17, 18 years old, 16, 17. He's a teenager. Goliath, obviously, he's, you know, he's probably average height. He's not very tall. Saul is about 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, tallest man in the community, tallest man in the country, probably. And he's king. And here's this 5'8", 5'7", 5'9", teenager wants to fight this nine foot giant who's been uh, fighting his entire life. So so, they, so so Saul has to be convinced. I mean, he doesn't, doesn't remember who David is, but he's not crazy. He's not going to send some kid out there to get slaughtered. Why would he do that? He's king. He may be afraid, but he's not stupid. So he has an interview with David. So how was it, David? How was it? How was it that you are going to fight him? You can't do that. You won't make it. You're going to get killed. Why should I let you fight? And the response is the second characteristic about David that's different than Saul. If you remember, before Saul became king, 
before Samuel anointed him. It's, it's in the, it's in First Samuel. It's, be, it's like chapter thirteen, chapter fourteen. Saul was from a prominent family. They had lost some some livestock, some donkey, or whatever, ran away. Obviously, those things are very expensive back then. So Saul's father sends Saul and, and a servant to go find the livestock, find whatever it is that ran away. So as he's going, end up meeting a prophet, end up getting anointed to be king of Israel. But, 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 but what happened before that? What happened before that was they couldn't find it. They, they, you know, he couldn't find the livestock. He didn't have that, the capability you know, that, you know, maybe he was spoiled. Maybe this is not his thing. I don't know. Why his father sent him? I don't know. But we do know that he never found it. And and one of the things that was said about him is, hey, you should probably head back home now because your father will stop worrying about the livestock and start worrying about you. You're worried about you for what? He's like 6'5". He's like 6'6". Six, six. He's, he's got, he's probably from, he's from a wealthy family. Everybody in the community probably knows him and knows his family. What does he have to worry about? Who's going to do anything to Saul before he becomes king? Who's going to do anything to Saul? Who's going to mess with this guy? But, but the point is, Saul, before he became king, was not a successful man. He didn't have his own little successes, his own little victories. So when he is anoint, about to be anointed king, what happens? He's he's hiding. He's running away. He doesn't want to be anointed king. He's afraid. He's afraid to be anointed king. He's afraid from about Goliath. The reason why Saul is afraid is because Saul has no little easy victories. He's got nothing to rely on. He doesn't have history with God. So when he becomes this person, this king, he's got nothing to rely on. He's got no history with God. David, on the other hand, he's talking about all the things that he did. Oh, I killed the lion, I killed the bear, I grabbed it by the fur and I struck it and, and I saved the sheep. You know, so here's this little boy, this little boy. He goes into this battle with already a, a small list, a consistent list, of history with God, of defeating certain things, spiritual battles, spiritual victories. Oh, you know, I remember when I didn't have any tuition, the Lord paid my tuition. I remember when I needed a car, the Lord provided for, me, for a car. I know when oh, I needed a job, the Lord provided me a job. When, when I needed to, you know, so, so, so David, David has a testimony. And the testimony is based on these small little victories with God. And the difference between one of the biggest differences, other than the bravery, the key to the difference between Saul and David is these little victories. So, so that when they're on the public stage, when they have this big thing that they do, they could rely on it and remember, oh, I remember when the Lord brought me through this. I remember when the Lord brought me through that. If you don't have that, when it comes time to face Goliath, you will run. When it comes time to face Goliath, you will be afraid. And that's where most of us are. Body of Christ, this message is not about killing Goliath today. If there's a Goliath in your life, do not go out and face Goliath. You will not be able to kill Goliath. Goliath. This is not what most people, most pastors preach. They tell you you're David and go face. You are not David. If you go face Goliath, now the Lord will protect you, but you will not. Goliath, you know, because the Lord is, is a calling for you, you won't be killed by Goliath, but you will be significantly wounded by Goliath. And the main thing is you will not kill Goliath because you're not ready. You don't have those small little victories that you could look at in your past and say, because I did this, 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 and yeah, I'm ready for that. So body of Christ, get those small victories. Search for those little, little things that could, that you could say, ah, the Lord brought me through that. Ah, the Lord showed me to do that. Ah, the Lord gave me this victory. Look for those small little victories. 
build up over time. That 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 will build up your faith. That will will build up your your spiritual confidence. So so for now, don't don't worry about Goliath. Don't don't worry about that big thing that's that's threatening. Don't don't worry about that. Just just get those small little victories in your life because that's the difference between David. One of them, the main difference between David and Saul. That's why this young little kid could go up against Goliath because he's ready for the moment. Saul is not. Saul couldn't even find a donkey in his own hometown. David is protecting sheep from, from this, these attacks. David is used to defending things and getting victory. Saul is not. David has history with the Lord. And that's why David is able to slay Goliath. It's just another thing for him. Point three, practical. But, you know, look, David's not stupid now. I mean, unlike, you know, we had this message about the unexpected and the difference between Mary and David and Joseph was that Mary and David were not naive. Joseph was naive. So David's not naive. He ain't doing it for free. He's not just killing the Goliath for free. He, so he says, well, what will be done for the man that slays the giant. Well, his father will be exempt from taxes. He's gonna get a bunch of money and he's gonna be able to marry one of Saul's daughters. Okay, I mean, he didn't do it necessarily for that. He did it for the country, for the name of the Lord. But but the, but what we miss in this is practicality. Now, now you, Saul, you have to understand that, that when your time comes, when you become a giant killer, there will be rewards for these things. If you know what happened with David, David was basically got these things. He ended up marrying one of Saul's daughters and he ended up getting some money, ended up getting his father exempt from taxes. He ended up being a general in, in Saul's army. So, so when you do these things, when you slay Goliath, when you deal with the thing that's threatening your family, your community, your church, there will be rewards for it. And and David shows that, that when these things come up, when these things come up, you have to have a clear situation. You're doing this for the Lord. You're doing this for God. But on a practical side, what's going to happen to me? David can't kill Goliath and then have to go back tending sheep. David can't go kill Goliath and just be playing the harp, right, to help Saul sleep better. It's okay for David to ask questions. He didn't set the rules. Saul set the rules. It's not his idea to give all these things out. But but if I'm doing this I'm, and, and, and there's stuff out there, I need to know very specifically, because I'm going to do it anyway. David would do it for free, right? David would do it for free. But if I'm going to do it, I want to know what's out there. And I want to be able to benefit from that because I know my life's not going to be the same. And I can't go back to doing what I'm doing. I'm not using this as a come up. I'm doing this because I need to do it. But you have to be practical. And this is where they, they, both David and Saul are practical. David, Saul gave incentives for fighting. And we'll talk about that later. He gave incentives to fight. He didn't just say, go out and fight. He says, look, this is a pretty significant risk that you're taking. So if you're going to take this risk, your father will be exempt from taxes. You barely marry my daughter. And I'll give you some kind of reward, some kind of cash prize or something like that. So being practical is not inconsistent with being spiritual. Being practical is not inconsistent with being spiritual. If you, if you do a good job with something, and if the terms are already set, you didn't set the terms. The question is, what are the are there any terms for this thing? If there are terms, then then of course, if I fulfill my part of the bargain. I need to get this part. There's nothing wrong. It's called practical spirituality. He's doing it for spiritual reasons. But in this instance, and he would have done it for free with no recognition. 
But in this instance, if there is something to be had for this, I should get it if I complete the task. Being practical is, is not inconsistent with spiritual things. Being practical is not inconsistent with spiritual things. So, so body of Christ, take a breath. Don't, don't start thinking about slaying Goliath right now. That's, that's not where most of the 99% of us are not there. 99% of us are not there. The, the, the thing, the thing to do, the one thing that you could do now, the one thing you could do now is get those small little victories. Is there something you've been praying about? Is there something you've been thinking about? Pray about that small thing. That just that small thing, whatever, just just call out to God, cry out to God, pray to God, lay it on the altar of your prayer life. Pray about that small thing. You know, be, 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 being on time every day. You know, you know, you know. My my daughter needs to get into college. My my son needs this or that. Just just that small thing. Then pray for that small thing and 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 and, and pray earnestly about that small, I mean, you have other things you pray about, but pray about that small thing and watch God move. God's gonna move you this way, that way, and eventually you will get an answer. You will get a situation that you would consider to be a victory. And when you have that, wow, write it down. Write it down on your iPad, write it down on your, your journal. Put it on your Instagram. Whatever it is you do to celebrate that little thing, that small thing that the Lord has done for you, take this week, take this week and pray about that small thing. Pray about that minor thing. Lay it on the altar to God. Believe God and trust God to give you victory over that. Not, not, don't, don't talk about Goliath now. Don't talk about some big, gigantic thing. Just, just this little thing. And watch God move because, because body of Christ, that's what you call spiritual warfare. If you desire peace, prepare yourself for war. That's it. You're here today. You've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your Lord and Savior. You've never accepted Jesus Christ as, Lord, as your Lord and Savior. Pray this prayer after me. Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. I know that you came for me. I know that you lived for me. I know that you died for me. And on the third day, you rose from the dead. Therefore, today, I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. And I believe in my heart that Jesus rose from the dead after three days. Therefore, today, I'm saved. My name is Marlon Curtin. This is the Rockway Cathedral. We're building God's kingdom in you. Go in victory, go in peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, we thank you for your word today. When we look at the story of Saul, David, and Goliath, we tend to focus on David and his victory. However, there's another story here, one that shows a man, David, who totally depended on you in all his life experiences and another who did not have a relationship with you, but depended on his own strength. Father, there is much in us that's just like Saul. We often try to defeat our giants in our own way without consulting you. We do not always use the measure of faith that you have given us. And we do not have the patience and we plow ahead without waiting to hear from you. Sometimes, we forget to see what you have done for us in the past rather than using those experiences to guide us. Holy Spirit, teach us how to live our lives being totally dependent on our Heavenly Father. Help us to grow into a deeper relationship with Him. Encourage us to study the Word more diligently and to use it as a light unto our path. We need you if we are to conquer the giants in our lives. Giants like pain, depression, health issues, betrayals, and even financial difficulties. 
honestly believe that you will never leave us or forsake us and that you will provide us with all that we need to succeed. We thank and praise you for all that you have done and continue to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for worshiping with us today. We pray that you were blessed by the word brought to us by Pastor Marlon. Go in God's grace until we meet again for Sunday service. And be sure to check out our website for further information about our ministry. God bless you. And remember, you are dismissed from this service, but never dismissed from God's presence.